carriage is doing something that you're afraid to do. Every everybody out there is uh, nervous to different degrees. Uh, it shows you care. It shows that what you're doing really matters to. But what happens is it turns into a self-defeating issue. You see yourself failing, and your body goes through the motions of failing. object for you is to see yourself winning so your body goes through the motions of winning. What you're feeling goes back all the way back to how you were raised and what kind of child you had. But I'm not going to get real, you know, into your head and in, into all that psychology. Um, just know that it's fixable. It's it's something that you need to work on and it's fixable. The problem is. You're nervous as hell, but you, you enter the tournament anyway, and you go through this process of what the hell am I doing here? I'm way over my head. I don't have a chance. Look at all these champions. And then you fail, and that reinforces everything you were thinking before the tournament even started. So you're sitting there waiting for this tournament to start, and nobody else seems nervous, and you see people joking around. People warming up and people firing balls in and nobody seems to be missing. And a lot of these guys are just plain acting. They're just, uh, you know, not faking, but it's like a mind over matter issue. To where, like, well, if nobody knows I'm nervous, I'll be okay. Trust me, they're all nervous. The guy who usually wins or does very well in, in these tournaments uh, enter feeling like they're supposed to win, like they own it, like they're the favorite, that this one's mine, you know, they, they see the, uh, they see the flyer and say, oh, I'm going to go and take this tournament off. And even those guys are nervous, it's just through experience they've learned how to handle it better than you. We all miss. So we all have a choice to visualize us missing. And we've all you know, run racks. So we also have the choice of visualizing running racks. So it's, it's all about control over your brain and not let crap from your childhood or from a bad relationship or from broken friendship or, you know, somebody said something horrible to you and it stuck with you and you can hear that a thousand times, you know, an hour as you're entering this tournament. Um, but we've also experienced people telling us we're champions and we're good. So we can also hear that in our head. It's not that nervousness is a choice, it's, it's that the choice is not allowing it to feed off itself and destroy you. That's your choice. So if you don't have control over that, you really don't have control over much of it.
I'm sure enough you do bad in this tournament and you're just too nervous and it, the whole thing was a miserable experience and you go away thinking, see, I was right, I suck and I just made an ass out of myself and I'll never do that again. So you never enter another tournament and your, your whole career is reduced to, you know, hustling bums out of nickels and dimes. You can't allow that to happen to yourself. You didn't do all this work to, to die here. It's not your time. There's not thousands of people unless you're playing in a really big tournament and it's, you know, there's a live feed on it and you're in the finals or uh, something like that. There, there's not there's nobody gives a shit. Put it that way. Another thing you have to tell yourself is how many people didn't enter this tournament because they were scared and then they let their fear stop them. And you uh, did it because you have more balls than they have. So just entering the tournament shows you're a thousand steps ahead of the guy who let his fear stop him. Maybe you didn't do good, but you had the balls to get in. And that's the balls you need to be a great pool player. And there's no, no pussies allowed here. Man. you got to have balls to play pool Get there early and utilize your green fees and grab a table and shoot 300 balls straight to the pocket as hard as you can without them bouncing off the table. Uh, just rip the back of the pocket off if you have to. Just get get that excess energy out of you um, by hitting pool balls. This should help you a lot because all, all that stress and all that worry and all that fear is actually just a whole lot of, of excess energy that you have to find something to do with. So I didn't want to get real into the, all the psychological stuff, um, but it's important to know that your mind is sending a signal to your body that you're in danger. And you should prepare to fight or or flight. Um, it wants you to get out of there before you, you croak. <laughs> now, now, intellectually, you know that's silly. It's just a bunch of pool players preparing for a tournament. Um, but it's not an intellectual issue. It's going on on a subconscious level. And knowing that that's silly doesn't stop your body from tensing up and getting prepared to get the hell out of there. So it boils down to energy. Your mind is pumping your body filled with energy and uh, it wants you to leave or just get ready to fight. So if you're about to get in a fight, you know, your body needs to be tense and you need to be prepared before you, you know, get clocked. So that's what's going on. And what you have to do is figure out what to do with this energy and use it for your benefit. And I mean, it's hard to play pool when your subconscious thinks you're about to die. <laughs> um, so you have to do something with all this excess energy. That's the key. Um, so your mind can relax and you can go about concentrating on playing pool instead of defending yourself. Comprende? Like that's as far into all the psychological stuff that I'm getting. <laughs>
it's it's energy it's too much energy and you have to figure out a productive way to use that energy uh, I know guys that, that go jogging right before the tournament now, just to get that out of them just to do something positive with that energy but you can logically tell yourself there's no fear I'm fine um, but your subconscious is a whole different thing than your, your realistic consciousness so it's good because you can use that for, like I said, something positive. And that's what you're going to have to do. And if you're running around the pool hall, you know, the outside of the pool hall, uh, 50 times, if it helps you utilize that energy, then, then that's great. I prefer to smack the pool balls into the pockets 100 miles an hour because I'm also working on my stroke at the same time and my stance and just the basics and staying down and my bridge and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm about to say now is probably going to seem like basic common sense to some people. Uh, but you'd be surprised at how many of these players are playing while hungry, while tired, while hungover. Um, so if you're gonna if you're gonna take this serious, and I assume that you're a serious player, when we're hungry, our bodies and our minds are, are jello, and we get consumed by negativity and doubt. Um, so eat and go eat a big ass breakfast, or lunch, um, eat. Don't handicap yourself straight from the start. You play on a full stomach and you'll play better. Uh, sleep. Get 8 to 10 hours sleep uh, the night before and enjoy the hell out of it. Um, and remind yourself when you wake up two hours after sleeping that you're, you're a serious player now and you're taking this serious thing. Get up and go back to bed. Don't drink like a fish the night before. There's not, almost nothing worse than playing hunger, especially combined with an empty stomach and a lack of sleep. And you're really penalizing yourself and, and not giving yourself a fair chance. And if, if you're going to be an irresponsible dork, you're probably never ever going to be a great pool player. In fact, you're not going to ever be a great pool player. You, you, you could make a living grinding small tournaments and, and you know, just hustling people um, by just being self-destructive and, and stupid. Uh, and it might look like fun to the outside world, but that guy, that guy is not He's not ever going to make anything out of himself. He's just going to be a hustling and grinder for the rest of his life. He just does not have the self-discipline that it takes. Uh, if you do those three things, I mean, one of them is not doing something and, and not being hungover and not drinking or just being out partying until 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, sacrifice that. It's, it's worth it. Take care of yourself. If you don't, man, nobody else is going to do it for you. Negativity and doubt and stupidity. And don't be stupid. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't, don't be an idiot. You know, idiots don't get too far. And they often wind up dead. You play your first match and the guys, you can smell the whiskey on his breath and he's... You know, he's just jelly. His body's jelly, he can't play. Hey, you got a major advantage on him right then and there. Just beat him. Just beat him. Punish him.
this is a game that you're basically playing against yourself. Or you could say you're playing against the table. Your opponent really doesn't have a whole lot to do with it. Especially if your opponent never gets to the table. But once you win that first game, you should calm down a little bit. And if you win that first match, you should calm down a lot. And that should set you back on the path of positivity. If the tables are turned and you drew a champion in your first round and he never gives you a shot, there's not a damn thing you can do about that. that that's just out of your hands. There's, there's, You congratulate him and shoot an incredible and you shake his hand and what are you going to do? That's, that's not your fault at all. Make it a short-term goal to just win one game. Chances are you're not going to draw a champion in your first round, and he's not going to go 9-0. and out. Um, So you are going to have chances. But, but you just get the odds into your favor by doing everything you can to shoot the way you know you can. And once you win that one game, should set you on the path to win that one match. So you just prove to yourself, okay, I, I can do this. So that's the kind of thinking that you need to go into this with. You have to do it. This is important. This is your dream. So let's not sabotage yourself before you even get started. So if you can win one game, you can win one match. And if you can win one match, you can win nine matches. Let's say the field is tough and you win your first match, but you lose your second two matches. But in the next tournament, um, your goal should be to win two matches. And once you accomplish that goal, um, your next goal is to win three matches. And just keep on going in steps like that until you're winning nine or ten matches and winning the tournaments. That, that's how these guys do it. They don't, they're not born winning. You have to learn how to win. And so, ultimately, once you win one tournament, and now you're the guy walking in feeling like you already won. That this tournament is yours, it has your name on it, and it's just a matter of going through the motions. Uh, and that's where you want to get to. Do me a favor, though. Don't turn into a dick. Don't be an arrogant ass about it. Because the room is... The room is filled with people who... Had to, had to do all this and overcome all their fears. And work their way up. So once you work your way up and you get there... Try hard to be a good guy. This sport needs more good people. And encourage them to do your part for the sport and understand how they feel and help them through it if you can. If it's the right thing to do at that particular time. If you see someone struggling with nervousness and, and just self-doubt and self-destruction, um, take a minute. Make a friend and uh, help them through it.